Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary, where I do the research to try to teach you a little something about what you're drinking. Tonight, I know that I covered a bunch of glasses somewhat recently, but I had an opportunity this time to cover a brand new glass that actually sounds cool. It's not just another take on the shape or whatever. These are stainless steel, essentially, Glen Cairns. They look very similar to what you might be familiar with with the Yeti, different type of mugs that they have, the vacuum sealed stainless steel. So what I wanted to do is do a little experiment here. So I hear some of you guys on the other side of the camera thinking stainless steel and metal with whiskey. Well, I'm not just gonna come on here and say you should buy this thing because it's cool, although I like that it's indestructible. I think that's a really cool quality. If it affects the taste of the whiskey, then I'm not gonna be the one promoting it. So I'm gonna kind of do this real time here, um, although I will cut away. I'm about to go grocery shopping. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour both the Wild Turkey 101, because I wanted to do something a higher ABV, and the Long Branch, only because I just covered it, so I, I very much remember what it tastes like. I'm gonna pour both of these into regular Glen Cairns, and then into the Snoot Neat Cup, and I'm gonna cover them with challenge coins. So, uh, they should have a similar air, you know, kind of going through them. So it should be as controlled of a situation as I can. And then afterwards, I'm going to drink them all out of regular Glencairn glasses and see if I can tell the difference in taste. So it's about the best experiment I think I can whip up here. So let's go ahead and pour these. So the 101, I'm gonna pour a good amount. And I'm gonna put the 101 into the wood colored one. I'll talk about all of the features and stuff of these cups, or these glasses. I don't really know what you would call it. I guess, vessel, <laughs> whiskey vessel, um, afterwards. But I wanted to get this experiment started. So I just happened to get in the mail today my uh, new Bourbon Sane whiskey challenge coin. So I'm gonna put that on the Long Branch, and then I'm gonna put the first version Bourbon Sane on the Wild Turkey 101. And for my coins, the Whiskey Dictionary in, di in Dick We Trust, this one's it's a little bit too small, unfortunately. It does go in, but it stays on top. Um, so that one's gonna go on the Long Branch, and then my I Heart Bookers is gonna go on the wood one for the Wild Turkey 101. All right, I'm gonna be back in about an hour and a half or so, and we'll see how these held up. Okay, so I am back, and my trip ended up being a little bit more like two hours, but oh well, I got everything I needed for Thanksgiving, and good to go. So here are, once again, um, we've got the Long Branch and the Wild Turkey 101. Then we have Long Branch, Wild Turkey 101. So this is what I'm gonna do for this experiment here. I am going to take two clean, clean Glen Claren glasses, geez, Glen Karen glasses, and I am going to pour these into them to eliminate any sort of, I guess you'd call it like mental, mental uh, influence that I am drinking from metal. I will, however, do that as well afterwards. Just, I'm trying to really put this through its paces, trying to do right by you guys, and really uh, see if there is, in fact, any sort of difference. Now, I don't think I mentioned it. This is using 18.8 uh, solid steel, or sorry, stainless steel, which means it's got 18% chromium and 8% uh, nickel. Now the nickel makes it strong and the chromium makes it <laughs> shiny and uh, rust resistant. So this is what typically is used within food grade uh, appliances and stand, you know, like uh, bowls and stuff. You got 18.8 and you got 18.10. The 1810 being slightly more durable, but in general, I mean, these things, they're totally gonna be fine. So. All right, anyway, let's go into the long branch from both of these. I, I kind of wanted them to both sit out just a, a minute to breathe, uh, let the nose evaporate just a tad. So let me uh, do a side-by-side -side nosing here. Okay, <laughs> smells like long branch. It's got a little bit of oakiness. It's got a little bit of uh, the sweetness, kind of caramel, vanilla, apple, a little bit. Pretty much the same. Actually, oddly enough, this one smells a little bit sweeter. Um, Almost as it, that, that's really strange because I would have put them almost backwards. Um, this little challenge coin was on here pretty, pretty well versus this one, which was on a little bit looser, but whatever. Either way, no negligible, sorry, there is a negligible difference in the nosing uh, that is probably attributed just to aeration. So, or oxidation. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. Cheers and cheers. Very smooth, like a long branch is. And uh, a little bit of oak, a little bit of you know honey, kinda, 
Eh, not honey, sorry, uh, like vanilla, um, almost like a caramel-y apple. It, it, typical, like, I, I don't know if you guys have seen my video on Long Branch, but pretty much Long Branch. I'm attempting to do the water in the middle so that I can do anything I can to try to cleanse the palate. All right, let's go ahead and have a taste. Pretty much exactly the same. Um, I say pretty much because I'm starting to realize that there may have been a flaw in my experiment here where these little guys weren't perfectly fit. But there is absolutely no metallic taste whatsoever. What this tastes like is a whiskey that sat out a little bit too long. So after I'm finished with these, I'm also gonna just pour something immediately and taste them side by side because I feel like I need to go a little bit further with this. All right, so let's try the, these were the, 43%, so these are just barely above whiskey. Um, so let's put those to the side. Let's try the 101, because if anything, at least in my mind, is going to affect any sort of material, it would be a higher ABV, higher alcohol content. All right, so let's go ahead and have a nose of the 101. Man, 101, I, I mean, I, I don't wanna say it's an underrated whiskey because I think a lot of people know it's really good, but man, this is such a good value for the money. <laughs> All right, smells good, smells like a 101, totally fine. Identical, all right, absolutely, absolutely identical. That's great, I wasn't expecting anything, never mind the nose. Let's go ahead and have a taste, cheers. Oh, you know what, sorry, let me have a little bit of water. Obviously, this is a little bit different kind of video than I typically do for glass reviews, but I thought this would be a little bit more interesting too. Cheers. Okay. Tastes like a little 101 that's been sitting out for two hours, <laughs> but pretty good. All right, cheers. Sorry, made a mistake. It's a lot to keep straight here. Kudos to you guys that are scientists who you know, write down notebooks and stuff. Hmm. Absolutely zero difference, which is exactly what I expected. My hypothesis was correct. Um, happy to see it. So let's do this. I'm um, going to put these two aside and I'm going to come right back with a couple of new glasses. All right. So I've got two new Glencairn glasses. I've got two of these. Now, the funny thing happened while I was rinsing one of these out and I was like shaking out the water, this thing flew out of my hand into my sink, sink, bang, 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 bang. One of these guys would have been absolutely obliterated. It was almost like perfect, right? Because <laughs> it's the exact point of this video is that these things are meant to be traveled with. They're meant to be durable. Uh, bring them outside. Don't worry about breaking them. Um, anyway, so let's let's go into that one last little bit here. So I'm going to use a Wild Turkey 101 and I'm going to just, you know, kind of take these two guys here and pour a little bit in here because this is how you're normally going to be drinking a whiskey. You're going to pour it. You're not going to let it sit for, you know, two hours. Although, uh, oddly enough, there is some, some uh, theory about letting your whiskey rest for one minute for every year. So, um, you know, try it sometime, see what you think. Anyway, let's go ahead and just take a taste of both of these kind of side by side, make sure that there's no real difference in taste as I'm pretty, pretty sure there won't be, but let's see. Cheers. Hmm, man, wild turkey, good stuff. There's no difference. There really isn't. Now, that's in taste. Let me talk about one little thing here that I haven't decided if I like or not yet. I think I'm kind of just, it's just a thing, right? So if you think about a Glencairn, these have extremely small lips here. Like they're very, very thin. This is not very thin. It's probably about three times as wide as a normal Glencairn. And because of that, when you sip it, it does have a different like it's a different, slightly different experience. I mean, most of this is about the ritual, right? As with any hobby. And so that's something to know just going into it. Now, uh, let me talk about some of the features of this because I, th I think it's kind of cool and there's a few neat things to talk about. Now, I've already talked about the stainless steel. So let's just put that to side. I feel like I've done the best job I can to prove to you that there is absolutely no difference in taste. 
So let's talk about these glasses. These feel really good. Now, obviously with double walled and just in general, a different whiskey glass, the Norlin comes to mind. Now, when I hold this Norlin, one of my biggest complaints about the Norlin is it feels like trash in your hand, right? Like it's just, it's so uncomfortable. These little uh, flat surfaces on the bottom, they, I mean, it looks really cool. I'm not gonna take it that away from it, but it does not hold in your hand very comfortably. This totally does. Now, a Glencairn, I'm a big dude. I'm 6'2", I'm like 250 pounds. I'm, I'm a pretty big guy. A Glencairn always feels very small in my hand. This feels pretty comfortable. It's almost like a Canadian Glencairn, actually, now that I think about it, um, at least from the outside. But in the inside, it does still have that tulip that gives you a good nose and a good taste. I will say though, um, you know, I, I might as well give a negative here. The the opening of the top of this is a little bit wider than the Glencairn, so it doesn't concentrate the nose quite as much. I wouldn't say that this is ideal for nosing, but tasting doesn't really matter. You could be drinking out of a boot as long as the boot is clean. It's That's probably the only negative that I've found so far. <clears throat> so anyway, very, very comfortable in your hand. It's big enough to fit an ice cube in, which I believe is why it's not so skinny. Um, double walled, so it's gonna retain your heat or it's gonna retain your cold. It's gonna retain whatever whatever's going on in there. And there's those little tiny veins on the inside that the Norlin glass introduced so that when you are um, swirling it, it's getting a little bit more aeration and that's gonna open up your whiskey a little bit. So in general, uh, pretty cool. You know, good to, good to hold a lot of little features here. Now the one thing, and I will say this was actually the entire reason that I agreed to even do this review because I, I was reached out to by this company to, to do this review and I love the idea, I love the idea of doing blind tasting. <clears throat> now I have two different types here, obviously. Black, wood finish. They come as two in a set, so if you were to buy this, you would get either two black or two wood finish, but they sent me one of each just so I could kind of highlight it on the video here. Blind tasting, this is everything that you want for a blind taste. You could fill this with whatever you want in here and you're, you have no idea. In fact, even, even the reflection, it's like, you know, okay, that's whiskey in there, but you're, you're not gonna know. So I would very much suggest this for blind tasting. I would very much suggest this for traveling. Now I did that video on traveling with weird whiskey and how you can prevent something like this from breaking. This is not even a concern, just throw it in your bag. Um, I'm going to San Diego pretty soon. I'm, I'm gonna probably bring this, this black one. I like the black one a little bit more than the, the wood one, but that's just my personal taste. Um, I'll probably throw this in my bag and bring it with me because I usually drink whiskey while I'm out there. So anyway, if you guys are interested in these, I think it's either 32 or $36 for two of them, which puts it cheaper than the Norlin glass. It's a little bit more expensive than a Gun Karen, but it's going to be because it's more durable. It's the entire point. These are a brand new product, so you could be kind of like one of the first to have these. And in general, these absolutely get my, my seal of recommendation, if you want to think of it that way. I think these are a very cool thing. Um, in case you can't tell, I've been gushing a little bit on this video, but I, it's generally because I, I used these and I think that they're cool. <laughs> you know, what else is there to whiskey? I mean, we go through a million different bottles of whiskey and we talk about how it noses and it tastes and all this stuff, but rarely is a piece of gear introduced that I personally get really excited about. And I think, well, I think that this is really exciting and apparently uh, that, yeah, really messy. <laughs> anyway. Thank you for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary and have a great rest of your day. Cheers. <laughs> I forgot I had anything in it. <laughs>